Yo, KBS guy, what's going on YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. How are you guys doing today? So I have a really cool and interesting video for you guys that I was kind of planning on making a while ago, but I'm really going to go ahead and do it now because of this conversation that I had last night with Newton R on my video. So we were talking, he sent me a, a quick comment. He said, hey, quick question, man. Do you think the two channel variant of this power amp from Monolith has better specs and overall better sound quality? Do you think compared to, let's say, our Rotel 1582 MK2? I ask because this is the power amp that I currently have, and I know it has a bigger transformer, but I don't know since you believe Monolift are pretty good, I'd like to know if you'd be able to look online and compare them and see which one's actually better. Because I was thinking about trying this one, and I'm a big fan of the bass and low end that I'm getting from the Rotel, it's lacking. Would really help if you were able to compare them online and let me know which one is better since you probably know more about specs. So we had a conversation last night comparing the Rotel to the Monolith because he's really happy with the Rotel but it's not giving him a lot of low end bass. And he actually has the same speakers as I do, the Polk Audio LSIM 707s which gives you a ton of bass, <laughs> a ton. So he's, he's asking me if my Monolith performs better with the low end than the Rotel does. And we started talking a little bit about equalization. I asked him, did you go into your receiver and play around with the EQ? And he says he's not a fan of EQ. He likes a flat response. He doesn't believe in changing that. So this video today is going to be about EQ or equalizers and why a flat EQ isn't actually a flat EQ. So what are equalizers or EQ? In your car, on your TV, in your receiver, and many other audio products, you have an equalizer, which is like a band pass, which allows you to change certain frequencies up or down volume wise. So in your car, most of you guys have a bass knob and a treble knob. Some have a, a mid-range knob, a middle. Um, on your receiver, if you go into your settings, you have a band pass, EQ band pass, a graphic equalizer that allows you to change certain frequencies of a characteristic of a speaker. And some people have subwoofers who have some kind of room EQ wizard of some sort, and you can change the characteristics of your sound with the equalizer. An equalizer allows you to do what the name suggests, equalize that sound. Most people think that putting your equalizer flat, meaning every frequency is at the same dB level, is a flat sound. And that's not always true. What a flat EQ does is whatever your speakers sound like out of the box is what you're going to get. So a flat EQ just doesn't change the characteristics of the speaker itself or the amplifier or the car stereo, whatever it is. You leave it complete at zero, so whatever those speakers sound like out of the box is the sound that you're going to achieve. Now, equalizer allows you to tamper or play with those frequencies. So let's say you wanted to adjust 32 hertz. You can change that up or down every so few dBs and change the characteristics of your speaker. So for example, for me, I have SVS PB4000 dual subwoofers. And I like to go in my EQ and up my 20 to 30 hertz range and add a little extra thump around those frequencies. I do this because I like to add a little extra thump, a little extra emphasis in my low in notes. So 20 to 30 hertz gets a 3, 4, 5 dB um, increase compared to everything else so that the lower end comes out a little more prominently than everything else does. And that may or may not be flat, but we're going to discuss why it is or why it isn't here in just a moment. But an equalizer just allows you to go in and add or take away certain characteristics of a speaker that you may or may not like. If your speaker doesn't have a lot of bass in it, you may want to up a little bit of the frequencies, not too much because you don't want to completely destroy your speaker. But you want to up the dBs a little bit to add a little more mid-range to it, a little more bass to it. If you have a speaker that's really, really bright, you may want to lower the upper registers of the equalizer. You may want to lower them down a few dBs to back off or roll off some of that extra top end to make it more of a smooth, less harsh sound. So that's what an equalizer allows you to do. It's kind of like a room EQ wizard in its own sense. Now, why isn't a flat EQ a flat sound? Well, it's actually pretty simple. Like I said, whatever your speakers sound out of the box is what you're going to get whenever you have a flat EQ, when everything's set to zero dB. Whatever that speaker sounds like when you plug it into your amplifier or to your car stereo or to your receiver is what you're going to get. Now, whatever your speaker sounds like isn't necessarily flat itself. My speakers here, my Polk Audit LSIM 707s, have a lot of low end bass and a pretty good present mid range and not too much of the high range actually. It doesn't have a lot of top end, not a lot of sparkle. So if you leave that speaker as it is, it's not flat out of the box. There's different characteristics that make 
part of this speaker sound good and there's parts of it that doesn't sound good. And the equalizer actually lets you boost or decrease some of those frequencies to make it a flat response. So for me, again, my speakers are really bass heavy. They have a lot of bass in them, but not a lot of top range and a pretty good mid range. So for me, I could either lower the bass a little bit to match it with the top end, or I could keep the bottom end at where it is and raise the top end to match the rest of the frequency spectrum. And that will achieve me a flat response. So if I put my EQ on a completely flat, whatever my speakers sound like is what I'm gonna get. And I promise you, there's not a speaker in the world that is completely flat. Most people try to achieve a flat response out of the box, but it's not necessarily possible. One, because the speaker's characteristic itself, it's acoustical energy inside the chassis, inside the cabinet, but your room also plays a factor in your frequency response as well. Some speakers perform differently in other rooms. Big rooms may do better based in small rooms or vice versa. And this applies to every speaker, not just floor standing, not just a center channel, not just Atmos, subwoofers, everything. It applies to everything, even in your car stereo. So EQs allow you to add or take away or equalize different frequencies. So don't think that because your frequency response on your EQ is flat, that you're getting a flat sound because more than likely you're not. Take the time to go into your EQ and change a few things. Play with the sliders and see what you get and you will see that you're actually achieving more of a flat response more times than not. If you try to balance out the top end with the mid range and then the mid range with the low end, you want everything to be a smooth sweep. And the way you know you're achieving this is if most people have a DB meter, like an app on your phone, or if you have a physical one, for like Radio Shack or online, Amazon, whatever you have, if you take a DB meter and you do a frequency sweep from zero to maybe 20,000 kilohertz, you want it to be around the same DB level, 75, 76 dBs, all the way across from the bottom end to the tippity top of the spectrum. You want it to try to be the same DB level. And that's how you know you actually have a smooth and even flat response. If your 30 to 50 hertz is at 80 decibels and then your mid-range 80 to 400 hertz is around 95, 100, and then your top end is anywhere between 97, 98, you're not getting a flat response because one, one frequency is louder than another. You wanna to try to smooth that out across the complete spectrum and now you have a flat response. Now there's a lot more technical stuff to this I'm not gonna go into because a lot of you guys don't necessarily care that deeply about it, but if you have more questions or anything like that to go deep dive into this subject, hit me up in the comments down below. I'll have a full engagement with you. We'll talk through it and we'll make sure you guys understand it. But that's basically what an EQ does. It equalizes your sound. It makes everything cohesive and sound as one whole unit. And speakers right out of the box are not going to achieve that for you. So don't think that leaving your EQ off or leaving it flat is necessarily going to be a flat response, a flat sound. All right guys, so I hope this kind of helped you guys. I know I left for the really audio enthusiasts out there, I know I left a lot of different points out of there and I did it on purpose because most of my audience, you know, doesn't necessarily care too much about equalization. Um, but for those who do, if you guys have any more questions or all, anything like that at all, hit me up in the comment section below. I read all my comments and I'll reply to just about all of them. So if you have any questions or want to discuss anything or go deeply into this conversation, we can do that in the comments below. Also, if you want to add your own opinions in, you can do that in the comments below for any other people who may need extra help. Um, but other than that, I hope I personally helped you out a little bit more. And for those who are looking to understand equalization, I hope, you, I hope I helped you out as well. If you guys enjoyed this short little video, leave a like. It really helps the YouTube algorithm. They really like likes versus dislike ratio. So if you like this video, hit that like button, leave me a comment down below, and hit that subscribe button if you're not already. We'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.